Algebra 2, Chapter 1.4, Exercise 1 through 10. In this exercise set, I'm going to go over in this video the odd number problems and leave it to the viewer to do the remaining, and uh, we will see how we go. Problems 1 and 2, the mapping diagram show a function and its inverse. Complete the diagram for the inverse of the function, then tell whether the inverse is a function and explain the reasoning. Well, in inverses of functions, the x's become y's and the y's become x's. And so this y in the range of the original function becomes the x value or domain in the inverse. So this is what we're going to look at. And so we had a x value of 16 corresponding output value of 18 for the inverse function we're going to have an output value of 16. So it's just the x's and y's switch. So 12 becomes 48, 48 becomes 12. And then down here, the last one, we have 18 became 40, and 40 is going to become 18. So x and y's just switch. So that's going to be problem one worked out other than telling whether the inverse is a function. Well, in this case, we're looking at these values here to determine whether this relationship between input and output domain and range is a function. Can you see that we have no repeating x's? So each x value of 18, 31, 148, 6, and 40 respectively can only have one possible output. And so, yes, no, it will say no uh, x repeats. Okay, so uh, therefore, now I want to show you a little trick for therefore. If you put a little uh, dot triangle, dot dot dot, function, that means therefore. Okay, so that little triangular dot pattern means therefore, therefore function. So that's going to be our answer for that one. And then go look at problem two. You might see a different result. Okay, uh, three, write the inverse of the given function as a set of order pairs and then graph the inverse on the coordinate plane. This instruction applies for problems three and four. So here we have the function, which is yeah, these sets of coordinate pairs. So we have five sets of coordinate pairs. So inverse a function is going to be simply just x and y switch. So we're going to have instead of negative 4, comma negative 3, we're going to have negative 3 comma negative 4. Instead of negative 2 comma negative 4, we're going to have negative 4 comma negative 2. And then we're going to have, instead of 0 comma negative 2, we're going to have negative 2 comma 0. X's and Y's switch. And instead of having 1 comma 0, we're going to have 0 comma 1. And then the last one we're going to have, instead of 2 comma 3, we're going to have 3 comma 2. And what we look for to see if we have a function, we look for repeating. Do we have any repeating x values? No, we do not. So our inverse of the plotted points here is going to be a function. So let's just go ahead and plot the inverse. I'm going to go ahead and do that in red just to, just to highlight it more. So the first inverse point we have is negative 3 comma negative 4. So we go left 3 and down 4 okay, right here. And then the next one we have is negative 4 comma negative 2. So we go negative 4 left and down 2 like this. And then the next one we have is negative 2 comma 0. So here's negative 2 comma 0 right here. And then the fourth one we have is 0 comma 1. That's going to be a y-intercept of 1. 
and then we have three comma two so over three to the right and up two and I hope you can see that each one of these I'm going to go to a blue thing again. Each one of these inverses crosses the x-axis and is a reflection about the x-axis. Do you see that? I'm drawing little arrows to represent that that's what happens. Here we have the y-intercept of negative 2 becomes the x-intercept of negative 2. Okay. The x-intercept of 1 becomes your y-intercept of 1. See that? And then the last one we have is this one right here. So these re each reflect about the line y equals x. And the x's and y switch. So do similarly for number 4. You'll, you'll see that. And you'll be able to do that. Then uh, 5. Here's five and six, and I think this applies through eight. Okay, five through eight. I'm going to do augment of five and seven. Find the inverse function f negative one of x. And this this notation here, negative one power, is the notation for the inverse function. So I showed a four-step process for this, and I. I want to show this on the right here. One, change f of x to y. Okay, I'm going to do that right here for number five. So I'll put y is equal to 4x minus 8. So that's going to be step, step number one. Now step number two, I have a different preference than what the book has. What um, what the book recommends doing is to solve for x. I recommend changing, uh, switching x's and y's. So wherever there's an x, you make a y. Wherever there's a y, you make an x. So two, I'll put down here. I'll say x is equal to 4y minus 8. Okay, step 3 is going to be solved for y. And it's the y after the switch. So I'm going to, put, I'm going to go and do that below here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just switch the order about the equal sign. And the reason I do that is I'm going to be wanting to solve for y. And just out of a uh, systematic way of doing things, I like to have what I'm solving for on the left side of the equal sign. And solving for y, we add 8 to both sides of the equation here. We get 4y is equal to x plus 8. Uh, last thing we do is we divide both sides of this equation by 4. And that means all terms on each side. So we have y is equal to uh, 1 fourth x. And you can write that as x over 4. And then 8 over 4 simplifies to 2. And then uh, the last step, 4, is we're going to replace replace y with f negative 1 of x. And so here's the last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to put f uh, f negative 1 of x, and again, that's just inverse function notation, equals 1 fourth x, or you could just write as x over 4, plus 2. And this is going to be our answer for our inverse function.
Okay, well, that's it. And you should be able to similarly go about your business on number six. Uh, use the same same method, four-step method. Next, uh, I'm going to do number seven. While using the four-step process, one, we're going to switch f of x with y. So y is equal to x plus one over six. And the next step two is we're going to switch x and y's. So we have x is equal to y plus 1 over 6. And then the third step is going to be solving for y, the new y. So again, I'm going to bring the unknown I'm trying to solve for, or the variable I'm trying to solve for on the left side. So I put y plus 1 over 6 on the left side of the equation and put x on the right side. And now we can get rid of this 6 by cross multiplying or one way of saying it is we can multiply this whole equation both sides by 6. And so on the left side of the equation, the 6 over 6 will cancel each other, and so we're left with y plus 1. And on the right side of the equation, we're left with 6x. And then the last step to solve for y is we subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. And when we do that, we have y is equal to 6x minus 1. And then working to the right here, we're going to do step 4. And I'll put that down here for the 4. Switch y with f negative 1 of x. So I put f negative 1 of x is equal to 6x minus 1. Okay, so that's going to be our answer here for number seven. Now, uh, nine and ten are uh, find the inverse function f negative one of x for the given function of x. Use composition to verify that the functions are inverses. Now, this introduces uh, this section introduces composition without really laying a framework for it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, maybe not with this problem, but maybe with, with problem seven. But let's go ahead and, and uh, do this. Again, the four-step process. What was the first step? Yeah, just, just see if you can pause the video and work this out. And then just go ahead and see if you got it right. Okay, step number one, change f of x to, to y. So we put y is equal to negative 3x plus 3. That's step one. Step two is going to be switch x and y. So I'm going to say uh, x is equal to negative 3y plus 3. And then step three is going to be solved for y. I'm going to bring this, the y's over the left side. So I'll put negative 3y plus 3 is equal to x. Now we can go about solving and uh, if we subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, we get negative 3y is equal to x minus 3. And then if we divide by negative 3, we get y is equal to uh, x divided by negative 3. is going to be negative 1 third x. And then we have uh, negative 3 divided by negative 3 is going to be plus 1. And then the final step is going to be switching the y to f negative 1 of x. So f uh, negative 1 of x is equal to negative 1 third x plus 1. So that's going to be the function written out here, the inverse function, and it says, um, it says use composition to verify the functions are inverses. I'm going to do that last. I'm going to graph the function first. Well, how are we going to, first of all, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go ahead and make the original function graphed in red. I'm going to put negative 3x plus 3, and so we find our y-intercept of 3. 
and then we put negative 3x, so we go down 3 over 1. So we're going to have a function that looks like looks like this. Okay, let's see if I can get this more or less accurate to graph. Kind of hard to. That's about. That's about as well as I can do in this thing. Okay. And so next, we're going to graph the <clears throat> the inverse function. I'm going to go to blue. We're going to have negative one third x plus one. So we have our y-intercept of one, and we go negative one third. So that's down one and over three. So this blue one is going to be the inverse of the original red one. And I hope you can see, first of all, that the graphs of the functions do touch at the line y equals x. Okay, that's indicative. And then they reflect about this line y equals x. Now, the composition is, uh, is something that, again, you haven't been introduced, so I'm going to do it really fast. I'm going to put f of g of x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put f of f negative 1 of x. And if we find what that is, and that is equal to x, I'm going to put question mark x, we will know that we have uh, evidence of inverse function. So the f of x function is, is that's going to be, let me just, let me just write the statement properly in the left. I'll put f of f negative 1 of x is equal to, we're going to put negative 3, and in place of x, I'm going to put f negative 1 of x. So I'm going to put this negative 1 third x plus 1, and then I'm going to put the outside here, this plus 3. And if all this simplifies to x, that would be evidence that we, that these functions are inverses of each other. So let's go ahead and do that. If we take negative 3 times negative 1 third, well, that's 3 and negative 3 and negative 1 third are going to cancel there. So we're going to have x. And then negative 3 times 1, so we're just distributing here. Negative 3 times 1 is going to be negative 3. And then plus 3, and that's going to simplify to x. So therefore, f of f negative 1 of x is equal to x. And so this is evidence that, that these functions are inverses of each other. So we're going to kind of ease into that. And you could do uh, similarly with problem 7 and problem 5. You could end up with the same thing. So again, we haven't covered compositions of functions yet, but that would be a way to, to do this. Go ahead and do number 10. It should be very similar to number 9. Good luck. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for viewing.